Hey guys, welcome back to the vlog. I hope you all had a good week. I want to talk about some trades this week. There's some important things you guys can learn this week, as well as things that I need to remind myself to improve my own trading. Let's get into it. I just want all of the money. So the first ticker I want to talk to you guys about is a ticker called Five Below. So this opened on Monday. Uh, it basically shot all the way down. It was down almost 20% on the day. A lot of times uh, when a stock is down that much, I'll just take a really small position in it. Honestly, this time it was smaller than usual. I usually don't take a position this small, but uh, I've been getting hit quite a bit lately on a lot of uh, trades that I have been making. So, um, you know, just to gain some confidence back, get some of my money uh, back, I decided to take about 100 shares on five below. The overall trade did work out for me. I just thought the market did oversell on five below and which is why I did take the trade. It was just straight numbers for me. I didn't even look too much about what the details are. They weren't filing for bankruptcy. They're down 20%. The news honestly didn't seem that bad. It's just normal earnings bullshit. Um, so I went ahead and took the position. I think I made about 400 some dollars on it throughout the day. I just kept buying into it, selling it off, buying into it, selling it off. Um, but I took a really small position and part of the reason I did that was the week prior I took a trade on Bed Bath & Beyond for the exact same reason and uh, that time I took a larger size and I got a little bit beat up there. So uh, just, um, just wanted to see if the market was constantly going to be selling hard on um, names that are not doing well. Um, it doesn't seem to be the case. Bed Bath & Beyond seemed to be an outlier and uh, glad I made some money on this trade, got some of my money back. The next name I want to talk about is um, a company called Delta Airlines. I'm not a big uh, fan of any airlines play, but it had good earnings. It was up quite a bit pre-market. I took a short position on it just slightly because I noticed the tape was going negative, but I was forced to immediately cover. I think I lost like $9 on the trade. Honestly, I'm just taking such small sizes because I've never traded Delta Airlines before and um, I'm glad I didn't really spend a lot of time on that because the stock barely moved after hours. Uh, I mean, um, throughout the day uh, in the market. Uh, I don't even know if I'm gonna leave this footage in here because it was just <laughs> such a boring trade. After that, I want to quickly discuss Uber. Uh, took a thousand shares on Uber, um, made a, like a hundred and so dollars on it, but um, I didn't size up for Uber either because I have Uber, uh, a, I've been scaling into Uber. Uh, uh, my cost basis on it is as low as $28 a share on my long-term portfolio. So I sized about a thousand shares, uh, made about $150 feel like lately the market is not having the moves necessary to make day trading very interesting at this present moment. I'm also, I don't trade penny stocks. Um, I very rarely trade penny stocks. So right now uh, things are kind of just in a boring position. Every day the market is just slightly uh, going higher and higher. So um, did Uber for about $150. Pretty happy with that, I guess, considering what it was. So the next set of trades you guys occurred Wednesday the 15th and uh, I traded two of the bigger marijuana names. You had uh, CGC and Tilray that were on my trading list. Um, both trades went okay. They didn't go that well. Um, immediately after buying CGC, uh, I noticed that it just basically dipped right after. I, I pretty much picked one of the worst times to buy it. Having said that though, I think there's temporarily going to be an upward bias towards the marijuana names. A lot of that has to do with Tilray poaching some top talent uh, to lead their um, you know, brands. Uh, so they're getting some new executives on board. Um, this is actually a really big deal. Uh, big name executives uh, jumping you know, good businesses and uh, climbing aboard Tilray. So it had a really positive boost on the stock. Uh, the stock was up almost 20% on Tuesday and uh, I decided I want, wanted some action. So I bought some shares of Tilray 
and CGC. So um, I noticed both of the names started to sell off a little bit right after I bought them. Um, when I saw that the tape was turning once again positive on an intraday basis, I bought into both of those companies a little bit more and it ended up selling CGC for I think close to a $200 profit. Um, and then uh, Tilray, I sold off the extra shares that I picked up uh, later on in the afternoon uh, for some, some cash. I don't know exactly off the top of my head how much, um, but I actually sold covered calls on the remainder for the end of the week because the pricing of the covered calls were really good. Um, essentially, I would make 80 cents. Um, they were floating around 80 cents or $80 a call. I sold four of them for about $320. Um, Tilray is obviously a very volatile stock. It can move either way, but if Tilray, um, essentially, uh, the strike price was $22 a share. If it gets past $22 a share, I make $22 a share on Tilray plus what I made on the covered calls. If it goes down, the covered calls do protect me for with about $320. So the trade is not finalized yet on Tilray, but uh, overall it's looking pretty positive right now. I'll give you some confirmation uh, next week's video. So stay tuned on where that stands. All right, guys, so the very last name, I have several other trades for this week, but it's just gonna be too much to go over all of that. And like I said, I wanted to start figuring out how to do the thunder round. So we're gonna work on the thunder round uh, at some point. Um, but the last trade I wanna talk about is Snapchat. Snap had some good results. And, um, you know, uh, I decided early on that I was gonna buy this name. Um, and uh, I noticed it was selling off and I took a thousand shares of Snapchat. Uh, the timing was not that great, but the tape did continue to go negative. Um, but when I realized it was going to bounce for the day, I took another thousand shares. In hindsight, I really should have taken another 2,000 or 3,000. It was my opportunity to size up on the name and I sort of missed it. Uh, Snap did have um, some upgrades and things like that that were really helping the name. I don't actually believe in the business, believe it or not, but just because you don't believe in the business, it doesn't mean you can't make money off the ticker. Uh, just the same exact opposite I did with Tesla is I do believe in the business, but uh, doesn't mean I can't take a short position in the company in the very, 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 very short term. Anyway, um, made a little bit of money on that, but honestly, my mistake here was knowing that the tape was going up and not sizing up. Uh, you know, I, I kind of um, chickened out a little bit there, but uh, lesson learned and I gotta, I, I gotta make sure I take the appropriate sizes going forward. So that's it for this week, guys. Um, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, and I got some feedback earlier about talking a little bit more about options as well as the trade uh, trading equation, Black-Scholes model that I mentioned last, um, last video. Yeah, and I'd be happy to go over all that with you guys. Keep in mind, it's not gonna be that useful for your actual trading, but it'll definitely help you uh, understand how options are priced and how many variables are taken into consideration when pricing these options. This is a video that I'm gonna sit down and actually script rather than just winging it like my other videos. So uh, I will try to get it out as soon as I can, but uh, obviously I want all the information to be accurate and correct. So it will definitely take a little bit of time um, and I will be scripting it pretty thoroughly. Other than that, thank you all for tuning in and um, see you next week.